screen, everyone. Great beer, friends. Now that we have gotten a nation, what is the way forward? This now we do not want any mistakes. And for that reason, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we came together, we had a kind of think tank brainstorming group. And the whole mission was how do we move forward? We have we already envisaged having our nation. Now the task is, how do we make sure that the foreign policies, bilateral agreement, all the relationships that we need to foster within Europe, America, also within Africa, and back home, how do we make sure that we do all this without any mistakes? We want to make sure that they know that Biafra is alive and well, and we know our Hello, rights. Hello, my beautiful people. Today, I bring you the latest updates of the ongoing convention of the great people of Biafra happening live in Finland. I bet you don't want to miss out on this. Relax and enjoy this video to the end. Turn on your notifications so you'll be the first person to be notified about the updates of the great people of Biafra. Thank you. Great United States of Biafra! Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to go ahead uh, on behalf of our Prime Minister, His Excellency, the Peace Ambassador, Bato Bie. Simon Eba and our honorable leader Nam De Kano. Um, I'm happy for this day. This is our third day. We have um, our 40 states of the United States of Biafra. We already know that um, we've briefly mentioned that before. Some may be confused with the names. Well, why do we have the list? Some don't have them, but we are going to go ahead. Okay. Okay. But we're going to go ahead. I thought for the open date the other time. Yeah. One on our screen here, so you can come close to the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and mention the 40 states of the United States of Biafra with their capitals and um, the structure. So the, like somebody said, our um, Prime Minister has already established the structure of the United States of Biafra from beginning to end. He already got it. So anything happening now is just like an after the fact, unless those are not truly following him. He already got all the structures. So in the United States of Biafra, we have 40 states. And each of these 40 states have their cap, uh, capitals. In each of the states, we have 15 counties, what we usually call the local government. So it's not going to be counties. That's what we call them. So 15 counties in one state. And each, each of these county, we have five districts. And in each of these states, of the district, we have three words. So in a state, we have 225 words. That is how all the states are set up in the United States of Biafra. So the first state in chronological order, we also have a map. We have a map of the whole United States of Biafra. The first state we have in Biafra is Aba State. The capital of Aba State is Aba. And Abba was carved out from the former Abia state. This is not the original map of. Oh, we don't have to mention the, list, the counties. Yeah, I just. Huh? Then let's go back to the first page. Just the first, leave it on the first page. Um, no, 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 the other one. Go back to the. Yes. Okay. It is just fine. Okay. So the second state we have is Adoka State. Adoka State. And the capital is Konshisha. Konshisha was carved out from the lower Benue. So when people start telling you that Biafra is only Igbos, 
These are people that do not know how ready we are. Yes, we have all parts of Biafra, all parts of old Nigeria in Biafra territory. So we have Adoka State as the second state with a capital in Konshisha, capital from the lower Benue. The third state is Afamai Igodomi Godo State. The capital is Auchi. Yes. Carved out from the former Edo State, and we have our members here. The next set is Ahoda. The capital is Ahoda, carved out from Old River State. The next set is Apakip Oro State. Apakip Oro, the capital is Oron, carved out from the Old Akwaibom State. We have Alansa State. Alansa. The capital is in Suka. <laughs> Carved out from the old Enugu states. We have Aludo. <laughs> the capital of Aludo is Abasinunu. Carved out from the old Abia state. Then we have Anioma states. <laughs> capital of Anioma is Asaba. Carved out from the old Delta State. We have Branham State. Capital is Wabisa. Carved out from the old Bayelsa State. We have Calabar State. Carved out, the capital is Calabar State. Carved out from the old Cross River State. We have Ebony State. Capital is Abakiliki. <laughs> Carved out from the old Ebony state. We have Ebu Bay. The FCT, the, the capital. We're not calling it FCT because we don't want to go that way. And the capital is Ebu Bay. Ebu Bay is the headquarter of the United States of Biafra. We have Eda, Eda state. Eda. The capital is Ekoli. Carved out from the old Ebony state. We have Enugu State. Capital is Enugu, carved out from the old Enugu State. We have Epia State. Epia capital is Yenogua, carved out from the old Bayelsa State. We have Esan Igodomigodo. Capital is Eboma. Carved out from the old Edo state. We have Ezan state. Capital is Uguacha. Carved out from the old Enugu state. We have Iden Igodomi Godo. Capital is Ehor. Carved out from old Edo state. We have Idung Ibon. Idoimbon, the capital of Idoimbon is Uyo, carved out from the old Akwaibon state. We have Igala state. Capital is Eba. Eba, carved out from the old Kogi state. We have Ibani state. Capital is Boni, carved out from the old Bayelsa state. We have Eka State, capital Ibodo, carved out from the old Delta State. We have Ikemba State, <laughs> Ikemba. <laughs> Ikemba, capital is Oka, carved out from the old Anambra State. We have Ikom State. Capital is Obubra, carved out from the old Cross River State. We have Ikumisia State. Capital is Umwahia, Umwahia, carved out from the old Abia State. We have Itai Anan, carved out from, I the capital is Ikotek by now. From the old Akwaibom states. 
<laughs> we have a web state. Capital is Coco. Carved out from the old Delta state. We have Iwuro State, capital Iguacha. Carved out from the old River State. We have Odumegu State. The capital of Adumegu State is Oga, carved out from the old Anambra State. We have Obuya State. Capital is Obuya from the old Bayelsa State. We have Ogoja State. Capital is Obudu, carved out from the old Cross River State. We have Ohabwenyi State. Capital is Imbanato, carved out from the old Enugu State. We have Ahuku State. Capital is Ezambo, carved out from the old Ebony State. We have Okiwe State. Capital is Okiwe from the old Imo state. We have Omambala state. Capital is Anisha. It's changed. Carved out from the old Anambra state. We have Olu state. The, capi <laughs> the capital of Alu State is a Akata, carved out from the old Imo State. We have Oweri State. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> The capital of Oweri State is Oweri. Carved out from the old Imo State. We have Kwa State. Capital is Eket from the old Akwaibom State. We have South Atlantic State. Capital is Sagbama from the old Bayelso State. We have Uroboy Circle State. <laughs> Capital is Ureli, carved out from the old Delta State. And I want to make one thing clear as a new country. You all know it's a work in progress. So one or two states may have requested for change in capital, and dear friends are going to be updated on that as soon as that happens. Thank you so much, dear friends. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, the next on the agenda is uh, securing the path to Biafra sovereignty, the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in building trust and alliances to be presented by the Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and her team, Professor Dr. Which one, sir? Or Professor called Doctor? 
all join. Professor Dr. Joy Irobi and your team, please welcome to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Great beer, friends. Now that we have gotten our nation, what is the way forward? This now we do not want any mistakes. And for that reason, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we came together, we had a kind of think tank brainstorming group. And the whole mission was how do we move forward? We have we already envisaged having our nation. Now the task is how do we make sure that the foreign policies, bilateral agreement, all the relationships that we need to foster within Europe, America, also within Africa, and back home, how do we make sure that we do all this without any mistakes? So we went to work. Now, there is a team, a think tank, Ministry of Foreign Affairs team that were tasked with how do we make sure that we do not make the mistakes that we made before and that we are able to represent United States of Biafra, policies, foreign affairs, everything that we need to make sure that we stand strong as a nation. So you will be hearing them speak briefly. But before we go there, I just want us to know that as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we are open now to international recognition. We are open for business, politically, diplomatically, anyhow we are open. And so one of the tasks we have given ourselves is to make sure that we talk to governments, we make sure that we write letters to all the different organizations. We want to make sure that they know that Biafra is alive and well and we know our rights. So it's been a lot of work trying to make sure that international communities, African Union, especially I also want to commend um, Honorable Adese, who is doing a fantastic work, as you all can see, in, in the United States. <laughs> Honorable Adese, please, can you stand up, let them see you. So she has been doing a fantastic work lobbying for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs within the United States. Without taking a lot of time, because there are really a team of four or five people that want to talk, they are going to give you a brief, a kind of flavor of what they have been doing. Remember that the whole goal is for us to build a nation that is happy, a nation that is prosperous, a nation that none of these things that have happened before is going to happen to us again. So without taking much time, I would like to invite Honorable Obi to come up and give us a brief synopsis of what she has been doing in her own part to make sure that the United States of Biafra is on the map. Thank you. Good afternoon, dear friends and friends of dear friends. I am here again to introduce to you the MFA organogram. Um, today, I am honored to present the framework of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, a ministry that embodies the vision and strategy of Biafra on the global stage. This organogram. Okay, thank you. This organogram is more than a chart. It is a reflection of how we operate with purpose and precision to serve our people worldwide and strengthen our relationships with nations globally. 
the purpose of the organogram. This organogram outlines a ministry built for efficiency, collaboration, and global engagement. It ensures that every arm of the ministry works in synergy to amplify our diplomatic reach, protect our citizens, and protect Biafra as a sovereign nation committed to peace and progress. These are the strategic leaders of the ministry. Here we have the ministry, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who serves as the chief diplomat and policy architect, who represents Biafra internationally and shaping the nation's foreign policy vision. And we have the permanent secretary who oversees the ministry's daily operations, ensuring policies are executed efficiently and the ministry's goals are met with precision. And then we have the director general for political affairs who focuses on strategic diplomatic initiatives, managing relationships, with foreign governments and international organizations to advance Biafra's interest. Together, they guide and coordinate the ministry's vision, ensuring seamless execution of Biafra's global diplomatic strategy. So we have the regional departments. Departments responsible for Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania, the Middle East, and the Americas. Each regional department ensures that our diplomacy is tailored and effective, addressing the unique challenges and opportunities in every region where Biafra has a presence. This is the country head of diplomatic affairs. So the country, the country head of diplomatic affairs are those that we serve as our ambassadors. Here we have our specialized department and units, trade and economic affairs, we have public diplomacy, security policy, and international law and human rights. And these are the complete departments of ministry under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is the full organogram of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Like I said, this organogram is not just a chart. The structure is not static. It is dynamic, just like the Biafran spirit. 
It is designed to grow with our nation, adapt to challenges, and lead us toward global recognition and prosperity. It is a promise to govern with integrity, to serve with dedication. Together, this ministry will ensure that Biafra's light shines brightly on the world stage. I thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Obi, for that fantastic organogram and breakdown. Now, I would like to invite Honorable Christopher to come and give us his own summary. Uh, thank you so much, great beer friends in the house. Uh, kindly permit me to stand on the already existing protocol. Uh, before I go ahead, I want to say a special thanks or give special thanks to our amazing MFA team. Can you kindly give them a round of applause, please? Uh, this team have been working tirelessly, sleepless nights, and uh, they've been a great inspiration for so many of us. Yeah, that said, I would be speaking briefly about what organizations uh, Biafra can work with or benefit from as a new nation. I will be touching on some organizations. First, the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the International Chamber of Commerce, International Organization for Migration, uh, the World Intellectual Property Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organizations, and uh, last but not the least, the human, some human rights and justice organizations. Uh, as a new nation, uh, we know Biafra is not going to be an island, even though, like our brother from Amazonia said, we have to help ourselves, we are on our own, but we still need to work with other nations. We need to have bilateral and multilateral diplomatic relations with other nations, and also work with other organizations. So first, the United Nations. We all know about the United Nations, so I will not give a lecture about that. The United Nations aims to maintain international peace and security, promote sustainable development, protect human rights, uphold international law, and coordinate efforts in addressing global challenges. The UN also provides a platform for cooperation on international issues and offers various programs focused on development. For example, uh, the UNDP, we have in education, we have UNESCO. In health, we have the WHO. Uh, so which uh, these aspects will be prioritized in Biafra. Other organizations include the World Trade Organization and its agreements. This encompasses a variety of international treaties and agreements that govern trade uh, between its member nations. It also, uh, these member nations aim to foster a more open and equitable global trading system, reduce risk of trade conflicts, and promote economic growth. Another organization that we can work with and we aim The next would be the International Organization for Migration. This is very, very important for Biafra, actually. Because as a new nation, we would know, as an amazing nation Biafra would be, so many people would hope to reside in Biafra. 
but we have to control our borders. They would not be porous. Yes. So this organization is, an, is very, very important for Biafrans, and I'll get to that in a minute. This is a specialized agency of the United Nations that focuses on promoting intellectual property protection globally. It was established in 1967 and aims to encourage creativity and innovation by providing a framework for development of international laws, or international property laws and treaties. As we all know, Biafra continues to produce geniuses, and we need to protect them. Is that these talents have been harnessed, what we call the brain drain, by nations, companies, or corporations all over the world who know the worth of Biafrans. And that is why so many of us are here thriving in these nations, but we are taking our talents back home to develop our nation. Thank you. We also have food and agriculture organizations. Their works encompass uh, a broad range of issues, including improving food security, promoting sustainable agriculture, and tackling hunger, and also malnutrition. The Food and Agriculture Organization, for example, is one um, organ of the United Nations or an organization under the United Nations. That is a very good example that we hope to work with. Last but not the least, we have human rights and justice organizations. Uh, I can give a lecture about human rights and justice that you cannot find in Nigeria, but that is uh, an issue for another time. Several international organizations focus on human rights and justice. For example, we have the United Nations. As we are aware, on the 7th of November, 2024, His Excellency Prime Minister Simon Epa announced that Biafra, or the Biafra government, would assent to or ratify all the United Nations human rights treaties. Thank you for that, His Excellency. The people love you. Yeah. Yes, we also have the African Union, although we are a bit skeptical about the African Union, but the African Union also promotes human rights and democracy. Yeah, I understand, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Or the African Union aims, or like they say, they promote international rights, human rights and democracy, uh, even though they rejected our case you know, against Nigeria, but we are still working on it. Um, another prominent organization, uh, we have Amnesty International. And I want to urge every one of us here, do some research. You can go to the Amnesty International archives, if you have the stomach for it, and see what Biafrans have suffered, in addition to what we've been suffering. You would know that when we talk about the systematic genocide against us, we are not just talking out of ignorance. Yes, there's been a systematic genocide against the great people of Biafra, but like we say, never again. Thank you. Yeah, there are so many other organizations. So in addition to all these organizations, we will prioritize working with Biafrans all over the world who are willing to invest and contribute towards the development of our new nation, because like we all know, Many are yearning and willing to bring their resources and expertise back home to a safe and sane society and join hands with our government to move our nation forward. In conclusion, thank you. In conclusion, whatever agreements we would go into, both national and international, would always be in the best interest of Biafrans. In other words, in other words, we would focus on agreements that would be beneficial for Biafra as a nation and our citizens. To that extent, we would need our best brains and hands, patriotic Biafrans.
We would need them in the fields of international relations, diplomacy, and other relevant, relevant fields to represent us at all these levels. The list above, or the list that I just talked about now, are definitely not exhaustive, but because there are so many organizations that we would work with for mutual benefits. However, our foreign policy, or how we use different strategies to guide our relationship with other countries and international organizations, would always, would always be based on our principle. Biafra first. Thank you so much. God bless the United States of Biafra, our beautiful confederation. Thank you. It is with profound honor and humility that I stand before you today on this momentous occasion, a gathering of unity, purpose, and a shared vision for the future of our beloved country, Biafra. We are privileged to be joined by such an esteemed assembly of leaders and advocates, including our prime minister, whose unwavering commitment to the sovereignty and prosper uh, prosperity of our nation inspires us all. I am here today to present to you some of the treaties that Biafra journey is rooted upon. I call what I'm going to present Biafra journey and international treaties a journey of freedom, a lesson from the past. This is a lesson from the past. Biafra's 1967 declaration faced immense challenges, including diplomatic isolation and limited international support, resulting in a protracted, painful genocide. Today, we take a different approach, which all of us here can testify today aligning our efforts with international treaties and principles such as the U uh, UN's Charter on Self-Determination. This presentation highlights how these legal frameworks provide a legitimate path for our aspirations, ensuring our cause is advanced with precision and legal backing. Among these critical legal instruments are the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties, United Nations Charter, and other compelling international treaties. And you may ask, what is this Vienna Convention of Law of Treaties? It was adopted in 1969 and put into force in 1980, drafted by the United Nations International Law Commission, ILC. It is a cornerstone of international law, serving as a legal framework that ensures consistency, fairness, and accountability in international relations, making it a vital tool for liberation mov movements. I won't call it movement now, like Biafra, but however, I used it here to navigate the complexities of global diplomacy and secure law 
lawful recognition under international norms. One of the core principles of this Vienna Convention is a Latin phrase, pacta sunt sabanda, which means agreement must be kept. And this is to ensure that states are obligated to honor the treaties they assign. And we, as Biafrans, we are confident that the UN and other international bodies will stick with this agreement. They must keep their agreement. Pacta sun savanda. You may ask again, how are these treaties going to benefit us? First of all, we are assured of legal certainty. Ensured Biafra sovereignty is respected under international law. Also, international standing signals Biafra's readiness to comply with global norms. Strengthens Biafra claims for independence at the UN and other forums. Protection from exploitation that prevents unequal treaties that could undermine the new nation's sovereignty, new nation Biafra. Another one is dip, uh, dispute resolution. This provides mechanisms for resolving disputes arising from treaties without resorting to conflict. For example, we could, Biafra could use VCLT provisions to fund defense or trade alliances critical for economic and political stability during and after our liberation. And what can you and offer us? First of all, Article 2 guarantees the equality of all nations, including emerging states like Biafra. Article 1 provides for people's rights to determination, their political status, and pursue development freely. Also, put mechanisms to mediate dispute between Nigeria and other stakeholders. Benefits to our liberation. It will provide a legal foundation for presenting Biafra's case to the UN General Assembly and Security Council. It will also support for diplomatic efforts to build international coalitions back in Biafra. It will protect us under UN mechanisms if Nigeria violates Biafra's right during the liberation process. A case is an example of that of South, and, uh, uh, South Sudan, who used international, uh, the UN, to get their independence. And how is this relevant to us? We have other international treaties that are beneficial to us. We have Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHIR, of 1948. It provides a universal framework for asserting human rights abuses by opposing parties, builds global sympathy by allowing Biafra with universal ideals of freedom equality and dignity. Other key articles that are beneficial to Biafra liberation, Article 3, rights to life, liberty, and security of person. Biafra can highlight violations such as extrajudicial killings and repression 
Article 19, that's of freedom of expression, supports the movement's ability to organize and communicate its course. Article 20, has the right to peaceful assembly and association, which you know when our people in the past have tried to assemble together, they were killed. So we leverage on these articles now to state our course. Another one is the Convention on the Rights of the Children, CRC 1989. This highlights the plight of children during conflicts, including use of child soldiers, dis displacement and denial of education, which is very common now in our nation. You all can st testify. Man with fish. Former nation, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Former nation. And then malnutrition and healthcare crisis. But this time, in a new nation, we are going to surprise the world, not just Nigeria, but the whole world. <laughs> Benefit post Biafra liberation. I'm sorry, my, my tongue is so. Access to international aid. Treaties like the CRC attract humanitarian funding and technical support for child welfare. Prioritizing child rights strengthens the foundation of a prosperous future generation. Global support, such as the NGOs, advocate for nations allied with CRC principles. We could use CRC provisions. Biafra can hold Nigeria accountable for harm to children in the conflict and seek reparations. And that is the importance of these treaties we are pointing out today. And we are going to follow them to the letter. This, this is not 1967 when, this is not 1967, when Nigeria used the territorial integrity to cage us, not this time. The same international treaty that tells us about territorial integrity is the same treaty that tells us about human rights, justice, and self-determination. Post-liberation advantages. This is talking about there's so many treaties I would like to talk about today, but we don't have the time. So we're just going to uh, summarize now. So the summary, benefits of liberation, international recognition, aligning with treaties ensures Biafra gains legitimacy in global forums. Uh, human rights advocacy. Treaties provide a platform for exposing violations and seeking justice. Uh, CRC and CEDAW strengthen the foundations of an in, in summary, Biafra's struggle for independence is deeply tied to international legal principles. Challenges, though, remain, but global awareness and legal frameworks offer hope. Freedom is not a gift bestowed by others. It is a right claimed by those who dare to rise. All hell, Biafra.